All right, so last, I wanna end with a few words on multi-step synthesis strategies. Um, one of the things that I'll note is we talked about forming ethers, forming thiols, forming um, sulfides. They aren't highly reactive compounds. So they're very rarely going to be intermediates in a multi-step synthesis reaction. We might generate an ether with a reaction that's multi-step, so that's an endpoint. But in terms of like steps in the middle, an ether or a sulfide or a thiol, they're not really great. They're not highly reactive compounds. What we did learn about that was highly reactive and will play a role as an intermediate in a synthesis pathway are the epoxides, okay? Um, so now all of this lecture is kind of all about when you spot that you're gonna be using an epoxide, okay? Uh, so first of all, one note, anytime you're using an epoxide, you're gonna generate two new groups. One of them is gonna be whatever nucleophile has joined and the other one is an alcohol, okay? One sort of, uh, so for example, if we treat um, this alkene, so that's a good starting point for creating an epoxide is an alkene. We have two different ways to create an alkene from an, epo an epoxide, if you remember. Um, but one of them would be treating it with MCPBA and then I can follow it up with, in this case, sodium cyanide, or it could be, again, any generic nucleophile. I'm going to get substitution where my nucleophile wound up on one carbon, and that means that the other carbon has that hydroxide group, okay? Um, and again, in this case, in particular, it was cyanide, but you can think of any generic nucleophile. Well, let me erase this too any generic nucleophile, as long as it's one of those strong nucleophiles, will wind up substituting, okay? Um, so, uh, and I guess one, another thing to, to note is that that can also be these nucleophiles, usually, so anytime you have two functional groups located two carbons away from one another, you can think epoxide. But also in terms of we can use this Grignard as our starting material. And what does Grignards do? They create new carbon-carbon bonds, right? So in addition, we can create um, a new carbon-carbon bond, also having an alcohol located one carbon away. Okay, and I think that that's kind of the real signature of the epoxide intermediate is the location of your new bond relative to that hydroxide functional group. Okay, um, you're always going to be located one, two carbons away. So if you've ever noticed that you've added, that you've created a new bond, that you need to create a new bond and you need a hydroxide functional group to be located two carbons away, epoxides are great intermediates for that. Um, in particular, like a primary alcohol. So for example, here, this would be a way to create a primary alcohol with a Grignard reagent, something that we couldn't do if we used, for example, an aldehyde, right? So an aldehyde would be a way of creating something very similar to what's up above, except for we're going to have that new carbon-carbon bond formed on the same carbon where that alcohol group is located, right? As opposed to if we use the epoxide where our new carbon-carbon bond is located one two carbons away from the carbon bearing that uh, hydroxyl group. So then if we just want to do an example here, what is a synthesis that I could use to convert my substrate to my product? One of the things I'm going to note is I'm going to need to create a new bond between this carbon, this carbon here, right? And it's one of the key steps in sort of when you're planning a synthesis strategy, figure out what, what bonds have been created, right? You're gonna to need to create a bond where? It's gotta be this guy here, okay? And one of the things that's gonna jump out to me to instead of using a Grignard with an aldehyde or a ketone, but instead using a Grignard with an epoxide is the fact that this alcohol group is located now one, two carbons away, okay? So first thing I can do is I'm gonna treat this with magnesium that's going to generate my Grignard. And then I'm gonna re react my Grignard with an epoxide, 
what does that epoxide look like? Well, it should look, it, well, it should certainly have one, two, three carbons. Okay. Um, and just to convince ourselves that this is indeed the product I would get in this reaction here, I'd have to treat it with water afterwards. But yes, because which carbon is my Grignard going to attack? It's going to be that SN2 type reaction, right? So it wants to hit that more highly, uh, I'm sorry, that less sterically hindered carbon. So indeed, I'm going to get it on that substitute substitution on that first carbon there, not that more sterically hindered carbon. Um, this in terms of reaction mechanism, right? This would create which is why I have to take it and treat it with H2O in order to get my final desired product. Okay. And again, the key thing, I think, you know, the key sort of signature, you know, I know I need to create a new carbon carbon bond. When do I use a Grignard? How do I use a Grignard and an aldehyde or ketone? versus a Grignard and an epoxide, it's going to be where is that new alcohol group located? If it's two carbons away from your new carbon-carbon bond, that's a great indication that you should be using an epoxide. 